to the Horse Racing Ner uh, Nation Stakes Roundtable alongside Mark Midland. I'm Joe Christofek, and our special guest this week is trainer Dallas Stewart, and we're going to talk about a lot of stuff with Dallas, Tail of Verb, Golden Soul, Commanding Curve, and a whole lot more. And let's start with an introduction. Dallas was uh, an assistant to D. Wayne Lucas for 12 years before going out on his own. 716 career wins. Dallas, of those 716 career wins, we'd like to play a little bit of a game on the show. How many graded stakes wins do you have? I don't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> we, we made Julian think about that yeah. last week, and he guessed a little high. 25 graded stakes wins. Nice. All right. And that's impressive. Okay. I mean, that's, that's an impressive number. Uh, not to mention graded stakes seconds in triple crown races, which is kind of what you're known for. You're, you're, you're gaining this reputation for let's take the favorite and put Dallas in second and we can cash exact as all day in these races. The most recent example of that was Taylor Verve. And Taylor Verve was actually entered in the Kentucky Derby, which is an interesting story because I know a lot of racing fans out there when they heard Taylor Verve entering in the Kentucky Derby across the news wires, people are like, who is Taylor Verve? He doesn't have any graded stakes points. That's pretty neat, wasn't it? That's very <laughs> neat. Now, that didn't work out, but let's, let's, let's rewind, because obviously right. he ran second in the previous one. I'll talk about that. Yeah. But tell us about this horse, the progression, and what made you guys come to the decision to even enter the Derby in the first place. Well, uh, Joe, thanks for having me on, um, Thank you. And uh, hopefully Taylor Verve will have something to say about that on June 6th about those seconds. So there he he's a great horse. and. Uh, you know, he, uh, I'm honored to train him. I've loved him all along. Mr. Fifke, who I've trained for for 10 years, he bred the horse. He has a stallion uh, tail of a cotty. He has the mother. So he's, a, he's into it. And uh, we've loved the horse all along. He, he had some rough races, some rough racing luck down in New Orleans, but showed a lot of talent. You know, always showed a tremendous amount of stamina. Um, very sound horse, not going to work. He breathes good, in other words, his air was air. He always gets his air. And, uh, you know, I just thought the races were a little short for him this winter. A mile and 70, a mile and 70. Finally, a mile and 16th, he runs second at fairgrounds, at the fairgrounds. So uh, then at Kima, then he wins going a mile and 316th. So and I just told Chuck, I said, you know what? If he was mine, I'd enter him in the derby. He's like, what? <laughs> I was like, let me tell you what. He says, well, tell me why. Well, because you, you didn't have enough horses that had enough points. Well, there weren't 20 of them, so you. I, mean, right. so I, I did the calculation. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, you know, what would it be? And I, I sat down with the racing secretary, Ben Huffman. Uh -huh. You know, these guys are open about everything. It's not a closed door thing. It's public information. I, so I was like, so the possibles are where the possibility of me entering the Derby. What number would I be? If I'm going to be 24, 25, I'm right. not interested in it. There's no use in making all these. It's not, not going to happen. Right. He says, you can be 22. Wow. And 21 is probably going to get in because uh, something happened and Rosito got in. So uh, I said, you know what? I'll be 22. So I called Chuck and went over everything with him and told him. He said, well, you know, it's a real long shot. I said, well, you're coming for the Oaks. Maybe we'll get into it. I said, I love the horse. Uh, Talked to a couple of old timers. They used to run the uh, bluegrass in nine days before the Derby. Spectacular bid. One and a couple other. I'm not saying that this horse is spectacular bid yet, but uh, you know yeah. horses did that. So I'm like, you know what? He can wheel back that quick. He's healthy, as I said before. Uh, He's a beautiful, beautiful horse, and uh, so that's what we did. That's interesting because he started his career with blinkers on as a two-year-old. Yeah. And just from a handicapping perspective and for our fans out there, when you have a young horse, what makes you decide to put blinkers on right off the bat? What makes you decide to wait? What makes you to eventually decide to take the blinkers off and he seems to be better without the blinkers now? Well, actually, I'm not a real blinker guy. Like, I like Early on, I like to give him a chance. But this horse was really, really lazy. And he's still just an okay workhorse as we grade him during, you know, the workout. So I felt like put the blinkers on him, maybe get his head picked up. We put the blinkers on him, and his races were, as you see, just were okay. And I was like, you know what? Let's just do something. Let's take the blinkers off. Yeah. So that's what happened. The change. It's just a change. Yeah. So 
With a horse like this, it sounds like, with, I mean, in the fall, with this sort of like one of your potential derby horses, and would that be correct to say, or a horse you're hoping to, to make progression? I really felt like that after his first race, and then it just, it went a little south. Yeah. It went a little south. Like, it didn't go way south, but it was, you know, it just, well, he just wasn't getting on track. Yeah. Where I wanted him to be, like the feeling was. Forever unbridled. She was getting on track. Right. She was winning. She was running second to third to Alma Chatterbuck. I'm like, yeah, I'm on track with her. And I just couldn't get this horse on track. But you know, as a trainer, you got to be patient and uh, you know understand what you're doing, understand your horses, and uh, that's the way it went. With, so when you're when you're in Louisiana with this horse, and you you, you believe that he's got the talent, and it, it's not quite coming out yet, is it just a matter of like? You're like, all right, I you got a month, so. I got it. You you got hope it. So. Yeah, you're, you're hoping for him to show that talent. Because the owner had given up a little bit. He was kind okay. of like, uh, he's just a horse. And actually, they were going <laughs> to almost think about sending him to a minor track. And I was and I was saying to myself, I never said this to anybody else. I promise you. This is what I thought. I said, I'll train him for free. <laughs> if he gets on track, you pay me That's double. Awesome. But I never had to get to that. Yeah. I had that last little card right yeah. here. I was just like, I'm going to continue. to. I'm not going to let anybody else train this horse. I promise you. But it didn't get to that, so I was like, give me one more chance with him. So then he came with the mile on the 16th. He ran second. Then we was on our way. But it's, it was, you know. Sometimes it's just, I mean, the blinkers off and the distance, I think, was the big thing. Yes. Finally getting more ground to work with. So you don't make the derby field, although there were enough scratches for you to make the derby field. Due to the scratch rules, you weren't able to get in. Right. You had to go to plan B, which obvious plan B was a shorter field in the Preakness. And you said right away, we're going to the Preakness. Well, we had to really do some talking. Like, uh, you know, thinking about that he could be a Belmont horse. Like Chuck's a, a breeder. And he loves a Belmont. We love to win a Belmont. So we now we, we we got the Belmont here. We got to figure out how to get there. So I'm like Chuck, this is seven weeks. There's no way I can keep this horse fit. I'm telling you as a horse trainer, it's a big strong horse. He's not going to be ready for a mile and eight. So Chuck says, you know, I, I don't know if you know Chuck. He's like, oh well, he needs a race. I'm like, yeah, he needs a race. I said, and I've got the perfect race for it. He's like, what is that? I said. The preakness. <laughs> He's like, now you're really crazy. I'm like, Chuck, hold on, now wait a minute. So I saw some cracks in things. Uh, a couple of horses that were at Churchill. I saw some cracks in the race, thinking that if this horse is as good as I think he is, he's going to hit the board. Mm -hmm. He's going to hit the board. So I kind of fed that to the owner. Kind of told him, he had fed him the information. Told him the way I felt. He says, you know what? That's where we need to be. He says, we'll use that and then we'll go to the Belmont. If he's as good as we think he is. I said, Chuck, this is why we're breeding him. This is, you believe in, you believe in your mares? You believe in your stallion? Now's the time to believe in your horse. Let's go. Yeah, so, and Chuck's got some real big, you know what? He's like, what? Let's <laughs> he's go. ready to Let's go. go. What do you, what, what's your perspective on entering the horses? I mean, you've had success with these horses in big races as long shots. You know, sometimes people like to think that these races are run on paper, and they're saying, oh, you don't belong, and this and that. But we know, you we mean know like listening to the press? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. But we, oh. but we know they're not run on paper. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> I tweeted 10 minutes before the Preakness, Taylor Verb looks amazing on the race track. Well, I'm going to tell you a little story. This is a guy's honest truth. He was on the van. I know how beautiful a horse is. Yeah. A I, lot of people have never seen a horse. American Pharaoh comes off the van. He is a beautiful horse. I mean, he is a beautiful horse. And he trains maybe better than any horse I've ever seen train. He trains to the minute, to the T. Boom. Boom. He's right there. So they take, Taylor, uh, they take American Pharaoh off. And then when I bring... Uh, tail of Herb off the van. He comes off the van like Hercules. I'm like, mm -hmm. I mean, they're like, what? Where is this horse going? So I'm like, well, we're gonna train him, and we get him out. We start training him. We graze him, and everybody's just like, he went from 50 to 1 to 25 to 1. Yeah. So, so tell us about the day. I mean, obviously, it was you know, wild. that's wild. It was tell, wild. Walk us through like your whole experience because. It, was it wasn't normal. It was the wildest thing I've ever seen. And I've been to the bush tracks. I grew up in Louisiana. We used to go to Pearl River, Mississippi, yeah. 15 years old. I mean, we did some wild stuff. But man, <laughs> we're standing there, the sky opens up, and it started raining. I'm like, oh. 
And everybody's like, oh, are they going to can they going to cancel the race? I said, no, they won't cancel. Will they hold up the race? I'm like, I don't know, they might. So the horses were great. They just walked around. The jockeys were so professional. They never showed any kind of worry about the lightning or anything. They were, you had to really be there to appreciate the professionalism of the horses and the riders. Yeah. And were you we guys in the infield at this point? Yeah, we were still on the turf course. Yeah. And, uh, so. Did, did that did that help being kind of away from the know. crowd? Thing? I guess. I don't yeah. know. What did you think about it from a race perspective, though? Sloppy track, your horse. Didn't know what to think. Yeah. I even told Chuck 50. I was like, I don't know about it now, boss. Yeah. And even when they're running the race. Built an excuse for the trainer. <laughs> yeah, I felt like I made an excuse. <laughs> but my oldest son, Wesley Stewart, the horses are running. They go down the backside. They have all the big tents. I don't know how he saw it, but he leaned over to me and said, we're a long way back, Dad. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> so they're coming around the turn, and Wesley picked him up right away, and he says, here he comes. So I grabbed Chuck, too, and then he just said, you going to be in the Belmont, your That's favorite awesome. race. He's yeah. like, yes, yes. So it was, yeah. uh, it was a great day. Yeah. So you've been quoted as saying, you know, that, you know, you're really confident in your horse. I mean, American Pharaoh is like supposedly, you know, yeah, well, I mean, the distance I think is going to help us out, Joe. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's a great horse. You know, can he carry it on another quarter? We'll see. That's what yeah. the test of the champions is, and he's a great one. I don't think he's not. He's going to be tough to beat. You know? So the couple of other good ones in there, Frosted, is in there. He's a really good horse. He was fourth. You know, so it's going to be a great race. Todd's waiting too. Do you think Todd wants to deny Bob? You know what? It's not. It's not like that for us. Yeah. You know, it's it's like this is our job. Mm -hmm. This is what we do. I go there. I want to win this thing. I'm not worried about who's second. Todd, Bob it has nothing to do with. You know. Yeah, I understand the, the, the love of the Triple Crown. I hope I can do it someday. And I'm not saying I'm out to stop. I'm. This is my job. This is what I do. Right. I show up, train the horses, try to win the races. You know. Believe me, if he wins, I want to be the first one to congratulate him. Yeah. But it's a big race. It's a big, I mean, it's obviously it's a huge, huge goal. You've got a horse that fits. you got to go for it. Yeah. What is your training plan in the next couple of weeks leading up? You made an announcement shortly before we went on the air about a new rider. Yeah. Who should fit the horse very sure. well. Well, you know, it. Uh, um, I thought about the, 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 the shipping plans and everything. I thought to myself a week before, if we get lucky and he wins, or he runs big and we want to go to Belmont, then I'm going to go right there because uh, two previous years I came back here, or I stayed here, and then shipped up there. I just felt like I left a little bit on the table training-wise. Mm -hmm. This is a big horse. It's a big track. I think he's going to love it. I think he's going to love Belmont Park. So I said, you know what? I'm going there with him. So currently, he's there with my assistant, Bentley Combs. Mm -hmm. He's trained. He jogged this morning. He's going to jog tomorrow, Thursday, Friday. He's going to gallop. I'll be there Saturday. So we'll get some good gallops in him. We'll get some good training in him. And see how it goes from there. Hopefully, it'll all work out good. Uh, so, any and plans for a, a more serious actual workout? Yeah, he'll have one workout, five eighths or a half. I'd say a week before. Okay. You know, and he's a the, the thing about the horse. Couple inside things about the horse. His weight's great. That's the thing that we look at. Their weight. They're holding their weight with this hard training, hard races. He ate five scoops of grain last night. That's a standard for him. He eats that. He builds off that. That's energy. That food is energy to him. So, um, you know, so everything's on, everything's on par from where it was yeah. before the previous. Mm -hmm. And we had, we've got a rider change. Rosario has chose Frosted. Mm -hmm. And that's my friend, Karen McLaughlin. I wish you good luck. Great friend of mine. We've been friends since we've been 17. Um, it's a nice horse, great horse. But, uh, you know, we've got Gary Stevens now. So he, wow. his agent called me today. I called Chuck. I said, like, hey, we need to get this guy. He's won it three times. Maybe he can help us out. <laughs> <laughs> he knows his way around. Yeah, yeah, maybe he can help us out. Yeah, no doubt. So you mentioned after the Derby that you saw some cracks in the Freakness field. Now, I, Joe, now come on. I guess what I you mean you. by I that. I can't tell you everything, Joe. You'd be you turn into a gambler if I tell you. Well, we have a few of those. You do better than Randy Moss did. He picked me to run last. <laughs> What but, you into? without getting into specifics, you are scouting your competition too. 
So you're saying to yourself, Absolutely. A, B, C, D, yeah, if we fit a certain way. Yeah, the great thing about the Derby and, you know, different than any other race is like, I mean, there's horses, a lot of horses training on the track every morning. You don't know who they are. I mean, you might remember one horse, but, you know, we have the Derby saddle cows yep. and the special time for the Derby horses. So you get to see him train. I thought there was one horse that ran very well. He wasn't doing as good. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't come back with that same race. That's just me as a trainer. Mm -hmm. I heard another horse. I saw another horse that trained. I thought his breathing was off a little bit. So mm -hmm. now you take two out of the top four. Right. Now there's a crack. Mm -hmm. Now I believe in my horse. So now they're putting the race together. They're at six now. They're begging somebody to come. Ah, now I'm ready. Yeah. Now Rosario's agent calls. Now we got one of the best riders in America. Yeah. That's what I told Chuck. Now we're ready. So it's kind of, sometimes it all works out. Gotta pay attention. Well, you know, that's the thing. It was an it was an eight horse field. You had three for horses a million and a half. for a million and a half. Three horses towered over the field on on, on paper. Uh, two or three big long shots. So it, you know. After the after first or after the first two, like I said, they hit the board. It was wide open. I don't think I should have been picked to run last. No, no. <laughs> well, you were the only closer in the field, so logic would dictate that you're gonna, you know, have well, horses. Well, you hope if you, you get up, but I, you know, actually, let me tell you. Like I told Chuck, we got to see what we got here. We'll see what you know when it started raining. I didn't know what to think, but I said, let's see how much class we got. Let's see if we belong. So I mean, if we get embarrassed, he's vanning home. We're going home. If not. We're going to we're going, we're going to New York, New York. <laughs> it's nice to know. That. I'm just giving you the real. Oh, of course. Now, it's nice to know. And I'm glad everybody's tuning in to Horse Racing Nation. That's right. Hearing the real stuff. Come on. It's good stuff. That's what, I mean, this is the stuff that fans want to hear. Is, yeah. You know, sometimes we again we look at horses on paper we as handicappers, and you you think it's a number, and, and there's a whole story behind it. Absolutely. That. Every horse is progressing to uh, hopefully improve, get better and better. Things don't always work out, timing-wise, ride-wise. You know, the trainers, you know, all these trainers, they do a great job trying to keep their horses on peak, keep them healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, just like athletes, sometimes they come off that peak a little bit. You know, and if it's, if it's the horse, if it's the, the horse or the quarterback or the person that's not peaking, then that's mm -hmm. when you want to take him on. Yeah. And uh, actually, American Pharaoh, he, he continued to train. He was one of the ones I said, there's only one, I said, there's, you got one horse to beat. That's what I told Chuck. I think you got one horse to beat. Mm -hmm. American favorite. Something happens, you know, it, and that jock did an unbelievable job getting him out of the cage. Yeah, I was hoping he'd, you know, take yeah, back to smart move. Smart yeah. move. I was like, oh, man. This well, guy he knew he could handle it. I don't know if this guy do. killed me with a California chrome, yeah. a manny curve. <laughs> now he's killing me. Yeah. I wonder if the when plan changed rules. though when the track came up. Slotty. He said it did. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? If you he think about it, because they know the horse can handle the slot. He said it did. Yeah. He said it did. I think he learned his lesson with Chrome getting stuck on the inside of Belmont and inside of Pennsylvania Derby, yeah. and he just you know. I think we have a question. We have a quick question. Um, Dallas, uh, how will Hill of Verb take to the added distance of the Belmont Stakes? He looked like he was closing a little late at the Preakness. Should be a plus. Should be with his braiding, and uh, I tell you, he's a horse that never really gets tired. Has a, an enormous amount of stamina, just natural physical amount of stamina. Dustin, so you're talking about a young horse like this, and you're saying he's doing everything right, he's progressing, he's eating well. Uh, is it a matter of you want to push him to, to see what he's capable of to do more? But how do you know not to push too much? Is it taking it one step at a time, or how does that work? Well, you know, the, the races are supposed to be the, the, the thing that. To show us how to, you know, to progress. So his race has kept getting mumble jumbled up. So it was quite confusing. But you do want to push them as you go with their training, as they continue to eat good. Theoretically, and in a perfect world, we want to push them right to the edge of the cliff. Don't get them over. You want to right. get them right there on their peak. And you know it's hard to get them right there. Which is what you would do any athlete. Sometimes we push them over. Yeah. You know, we're pulling them back. You know. So I just felt like for the previous, the source is on. So. And, and this ties into what you're saying. The Triple Crown is one chapter in this horse's story. It's a big chapter. It's a big chapter, but three-year-old season is where you can maximize your earning potential. There's a lot of races restricted to three-year-olds. There's a lot of stakes throughout the season. Some of them are very high profile. 
some of them are races that you're going to be eight to five versus a high profile race where you're going to be more than a thinker. What are you going to think about that right now? We're thinking, <laughs> we're thinking all about the Belmont, the Bremens, and the Triple Crown. There you go. <laughs> I, I can't help myself. I can't me. follow up to that. There's nothing there. There's nothing else yeah, I can so, say. So. Well, all right, so let's talk about the Belmont. Um, <laughs> That's awesome, seriously. So you were at the Belmont with Golden Soul and Command Kerr. Correct. And you said both times you brought the horse back here at church? Well, no, they were here. Okay. We, we skipped the previous. That's right. Okay, so that made sense. And so right. you're doing something a little differently. Now, what about um, as far as the way the Belmont shapes up? You know, it's a mile and a half. It's one of the longest races of the year. And everyone wants to say, oh, you need a closer. But when you really start to look at the race, uh, it doesn't usually develop into horses coming from the clouds that often. Well, Tonalus, he was back up a good ways, wasn't he? Tonalus was, a Birdstone, I mean, it's, you know, it's, you know, it's tactically, it's a, you know, but it marks right, I mean, people have that common thought, the longer the distance, the better chance a closer has, but I think it's more of, of a stamina kind of thing, and like you said, if the horse wants to run all day, whether it's a mile and a half on dirt or a mile and a half on turf, it's more of a test of stamina than anything else. You know, I think this is a Super Bowl. You train your players, you train your horse to go win the race. Now how the race and the game is going to develop, you leave it to your rider. Okay. He knows this thing. He's won it three times. If, it's, if he thinks it's slow, he'll get, he'll get a move on. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to leave it up to him. I mean, Gary's good at that too. Yeah. He's good at that, you know? So, you, you know, we're, yeah. we're, going to, we're going to draw that as a plus. In these big races, you draw up the pluses and the minuses. Where am I going to miss it at? Am I missing it because of the speed factor, like you said, like with commanding curve? I was wondering about that because he was going to be a ways back, but you know he didn't get anything done. But Thomas was back, so you, you can't buy into you know things too much. Mm -hmm. You got to just train your horse and run your horse. Yeah, if there's no speed in the race, you can't manufacture speed. Obviously, if you've got a you can't send horse behind, you can't horse out of your race. Right? You just leave him over. If you get beat, listen, we got a great horse, we got a great jockey. If it's meant to be, he'll win it. If it isn't, we'll go on to the trappers. Awesome. All I can say. So, all right, so I think we, we got another question. Up. Yeah, um, so Denise W. wants to know, uh, what is his training schedule like on a daily basis? Can you kind of walk us through his routine? Well, it, it, like, like right now, he just jogged, in other words, he just trotted today, a mile and a half, uh, the wrong way of the racetrack. Tomorrow, he's going to do the same thing because he just ran four days ago. We're just limbering him up, might have some sore muscles, you know, just making sure that there's nothing that we need to address, you know, maybe with some ice or whatever. So he'll jog again tomorrow, and then on Friday he'll start his gallop or canter, and then we'll start, you know, progressing as we go uh, on through the week. So. Okay. Get him a, get him a work about midway between Friday the or Saturday, not New York. You have to really watch the weather. Okay. So that track doesn't dry out as good as Churchill. So if it's going to rain, you know, they might say heavy rain Saturday and Sunday, we might work on Friday. You know, yeah. we have to give up a day. So you just have to flush the well. And, and the obvious question, you don't want to fool with a sloppy track as far as workouts. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, he ran in the slop, he grabbed herself by the boots and hoped, up, hoped it went well. It did, and he came out of it healthy. But always uh, drier tracks are the safest. Right. Definitely. And, all right, so now you, you pulled off these three amazing upsets, uh, upsets, running second, uh, long shots, you know, Golden Soul, second to Derby, 30, 40 to 1, Commanding Curse, 37 to 1, run second to California Chrome, and now you run second at big odds with Taylor Burr. <clears throat> what, um, how, how does that happen? How, what, you know, how does that come, come about? I, mean, I don't know, my friends made a lot of money, they all, I told them, you know, they, uh, but uh, um, I don't know, you know, I don't gamble, so I don't really care if they're a million to one or two to five. It doesn't matter to me. But, uh, you know, I mean, listen, they didn't win the Louisiana Derby, they ran third. Mm -hmm. That doesn't put them favored or whatever for the Derby. They lose, you know, lose a little face with that. Mm -hmm. This horse was a maiden, jump into grade one. Shouldn't be 25 this year, you know, but I'm going to train him like he's three to five. And so these are horses that have, were progressing in your mind. They fit. They fit these classic races, but they were up hopefully. and coming to it. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. So you're taking That's a cool. shot. Well, yeah. You're taking. You know. You 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 checking your health. You're checking your energy. You know their pedigree. You know. You you've been around the horse for mm, over a year now. You you get them in May. You're coming back in May. 
So you, you, they're giving you that feel that they can handle it, that they're tough, they're gritty. Commanding Curve is a very good horse. Golden Souls uh, turned out to be a pretty decent turf horse by uh, Perfect Soul. So, you know, it's kind of the way it goes. And that's the thing with the three-year-old races and the Triple Crown. You might say to yourself, and you've got a good handle on their pedigree, maybe this horse might be better bred for turf, but this is the Derby, this is the Preak, this is the Bob. We want to see where we fit. More money to be made on dirt. But now you've got Golden Soul, who has turned into a grass horse, mm -hmm. and he's running in the Louisville on Saturday at Churchill. He's two for two on this turf. Right. His races at Fairgrounds this year were, weren't that great, but right. you, you put him away right, just since February, long string of workouts, right. and now he's back to his favorite turf. As a trainer, is that the way you kind of plan things and say, okay, this isn't working, or let's plan for this, or let's, I love when trainers target races, because well, that, that, you know where you're going. Right, well that's what we did, I mean it is a stake, he's getting beaten a lot of races, but I felt like maybe he just didn't like the turf course in New Orleans. So I got him back up here, man he started black lettering back on the turf, I'm like, and this horse will tout himself, he'll shake his head, he'll kick the wall, he's doing all of those things, he's really feeling it now, so I'm like, well, we're going to put him in this mile and a half stake that he should just love. So, you know, some nice horses in there. You know, then again, we hit the board. We know we're, we know we, we're a step ahead of where we were. Yeah. Robbie's ridden up well before. Correct. Rode him second in the dirt. And Robbie, in this race, I don't know if you've gotten a chance to take a look at it, but, you know, for a mile and a half race, it's kind of paceless. Oh, really? And Robbie is the kind of rider that will position a horse correctly no matter what race he's in and recognize that fact. Uh, the races at Churchill last year were visually impressive, the ones that he won. Mm -hmm. So technically, you're looking at this race, it's a grade three, there's no real defined favorite, there's not a lot of pace. Um, again, it comes back to handicapping your own horse and handicapping the competition. But to me, I might be standing in the middle of the paddock on Saturday at Churchill and, and put you right on top there, buddy. <laughs> well, you know, I, we'll just have to see. I mean, he's got, he's Is that got, good or bad? I mean, he'll, he'll draw it out on you on looks, because he looks, he looks great. Yeah. You know, and he's worked great over the turf course. So, and he's two for two over it. So, for some reason, the turf course was great in New Orleans this year, but he just didn't, he just didn't get to run his race. Maybe it was the distance. He, you know, this Maybe is too much time on Bourbon Street for the horse. Maybe too hmm. much out, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's very healthy, he's training good, he's working good, so there he goes. Did you ask something? Yeah, we've got two questions. Um, first, what gave you, what about this horse gave you the confidence to enter the Preakness? Like, was it something specifically, like a moment when you said yes? I guess it was a moment. I was driving, coming home, right on the Gene Snyder, and I was just thinking, you know, I was just like, man, we need to run him in the Derby. I'm like, so I started going over in my head about, you know, you know, can he get a piece of it? Can he get a piece of it? And I was like, you know what, maybe he can. You got to enter to find out, see what happens. So mm -hmm. that's the way it just. Did the a, previous results of you finishing second with Golden Soul Commanding Curve, no, did that play into I, it? I, I'll tell you what it was. Let me backtrack. I'll tell you what it was. He won going a mile and three sixteenths. Jarrell Harrell was very impressed with him. And when I went to the test barn, when he was cooling out, he was just standing there like he had never run. I'm like, mm -hmm. this horse wants this distance. He's bred for this distance. That's what he needs. Let's, let's go for him. So, awesome. and how frustrating was it when huh. you're sitting there, you're number 22, then you're number 21, on the outside for three days, and then you don't get in, and then we have these defections that come out of the race. It's just, it's tough on the timing, isn't it? It was tough, you know, but we have our rules, you know, it's a nine o'clock rule. If no one scratches, then I'm out. So that's exactly what happened. They scratched a little bit later, and so I was out. You can't get back in. So yeah. that's our rules. It seems like everybody's trying to do everything they can to win the Derby. They're not out to do anyone any favors to I'm scratch really trying hard. at 855 and get you in, right? Yeah, I was hoping at 855 I'd get a call and say, you're in. Yeah. I got a call at 915 and said, oh, you're out. Right. <laughs> but like you said, things happen not yeah. necessarily for a reason, but the way it played out. The way it played out. You ran second in the Preakness, but we'll never know what would have happened in the Kentucky Derby. Not Although this year, the way the race played out, though, it was kind of like a, yeah. a procession around there. Right. Not many horses close. Close, yeah, they did. If Frost was the only one that closed, right. yeah. yeah. So you know what? It's just one of those things. You know, we're healthy. We're doing good. Now we're playing on to the next game. 
Uh, can you talk a little bit about his personality and also how did he uh, do with the crowds at Preakness? And do you think he'll handle the crowds at Belmont as well? Yeah, I think he'll handle the crowd great at Belmont. He handled them great at the Preakness. If you look at uh, some of the pictures of him online, he's a beautiful horse. He's just got a great mind about himself. He never gets really uh, over the top. As we say, he doesn't get too shook up. He doesn't get washy. Um, he's, a, he's a really good racehorse. That's great. So, uh, I was going to say, so as we look ahead to the to the Belmont and, uh, you know, American Fair has gone for the Triple Crown, huge story. Um, just from a trainer's perspective, what what's it like for a horse like this? I mean, how big of a test it is? You know, we ran the Arkansas Derby through Slater, the Kentucky Derby. Now, you know, two weeks later, the Preakness, three weeks to the Belmont. Um, how tough is that on a horse? And, uh, you know, like I said, going in, I don't know if I said it on <clears throat> camera or whatever. But the way he trains is like perfect. He gets his head in the right spot. He has no wasted action. He gallops around there. He trains, he jogs, he gallops, he goes home. Just like walking in one door and out the other. Mm -hmm. It's that easy for him. Wow. He's that talented. It is unbelievable. Yeah, so, so the races have been that easy on him. Now the mud race, that could be a little different. He handled the mud. Uh, he loves the mud. Mm -hmm. So that just goes to show you how talented he is. He loves the mud, he loves the tri track. So, you know, hopefully, not hopefully, but, you know, if he's going to get beat, I thought he would have got beat last time. Right. So, now the next time, now it's going to be a little challenge. You know, he might have lost a little bit of weight. They got to get a little bit of weight back on him to get to the Belmont. But he, he might have lost a little weight, but he ain't lost his talent. Mm -hmm. So, that's what I'm saying. He is an amazing, amazing horse. And I hope we can beat him, but it's going to be a great horse. Sandy track, the nine of the last 17, you know, derby winners. Have yeah, gone this out. is an exceptional horse. Yeah, track. no. This is an exceptional uh, there, horse. There are, know, there are things he, that people can say, contrary, obviously. He trains like history. At, he, if he trains, you know, the next couple of weeks, like I won't be here to see him train. And as a trainer, you appreciate watching. He's, uh, I mean, he just puts it all together out there for you. And, um, you know, if he trains good, and he loves Belmont, and he loves a mile and a half, it's going to be hard to beat. So you train him for free is what you're telling us? Him? I would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for a week or two. <laughs> I think we had another Our question. Our next question kind of delves into that. So how is he liking the Belmont track so far? Well, he, all, my horse, all he did was just jog. So he's okay. going to jog again tomorrow, and then start galloping Friday. Different kind of surface. I mean, they say sandy. You know, obviously the different dimensions material. are different, different material. Some horses kind of spin their wheels over that a little bit, and some horses like it better than others. Is that a crack in American Pharaoh that he still has to prove he can handle that surface, or does it not even matter? Might not even matter. He's a yeah. talented. Right. Mm -hmm. So I would think if if you would, if I would if you'd say to me what what can beat him? Well, the rain can't beat him. The crowd can't beat him. Maybe the distance will be. That's, you know, that's the only thing is that, you know, if I'm trying to think of a crack, you know, maybe that's it. But, you know, that, that jockey has ridden him flawlessly. You know, the trainer has trained him flawlessly. So it's, it's, it's pretty remarkable to watch. So if you can't win, if you can't win, you can't beat him, you're rooting for him to complete. That's a fair statement, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Maybe. I mean, that's a fair statement, yes, as a fan. You know, but I mean, Karen McLaughlin's in there, right? But he's already won it. You know, yeah. Todd's in there; he's already won it. So I would say, you know, I would be pulling for him. But I want to try as hard as I can to be. I want to be up there for two weeks training with everything I got. Yeah, right. I want to be right on. It's going to be a one horse stable, me and that horse, for everything that I got within me to do what I can do. So mm -hmm. still might not be enough. Yeah, you get there Saturday, so you're. I mean. You've got a big operation, you've got people you trust at all the other racetracks, obviously, that you're running at, but this is it. I mean, this is what you live this for as a trainer. Thing. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. My family's behind me. We're, they're coming up there back and forth, and, uh, you know, see what happens. Be yeah. So you're no stranger to horses that run in Triple Crown. Uh, do you think this is the best horse that you've had in the last couple of years? Macho, again, just for the record, another one second yeah. in the Preakness. One of the most memorable races in recent memory was Rachel yeah. and Macho again coming to her. Was Rachel was never the same after that. Um, 
you know, she had to run really hard, but, you know, that's another example. So your question is, do I think that American Pharaoh... No, do you think that Taylor Verb is, is one of the best horses I, that you've had? Yes, right? I, think he's a, I, I think he's an exceptional horse. Yeah. An exceptional horse that I've, that I've had my hands on because, you know, he's, he's very sound. He, he, he's an unbelievable looking athlete. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't take a back seat to American Pharaoh when you're standing next to each other. You know, he looks that good. Now, whether or not he can outrun him, I mean. So you don't think we've seen the best of Taylor? I hope not. I don't think so. You know, I think he'll get better through the year. So, also, you know, we got the Travers and we got a lot of good races coming on. Yeah. So, uh, the third of that triumphant is Commanding Curve. We haven't seen him since, you know, the end of last, you know, late last summer. A uh, huge run in the Derby. And we haven't seen him, but I recognize on the work tab that he's getting close. Yeah. So what do you do with a horse like that? He's got some conditions left, but he's already proven himself in grade six competition. How do you map out a plan? Is it dependent on how he's doing, right. so to speak? Well, he's very healthy now. He got banged up uh, a little bit during the uh, Triple Crown, the Travers. We had to give him a couple of months off. Had a little bit of surgery, nothing major. Um, but he's come back really good. He's strong. He's like a gorilla. He's just a big brute of a horse. And uh, so uh, he's got some conditions left. You know, we're going to hopefully run him at Churchill or not. If Churchill, if not, we'll run him at Belmont or Saratoga if he's ready. It just depends. We're going to work him tomorrow and see how he is. But he's had some good works. He looks great. He's healthy. And, uh, you know, we're just going to take our time with him and have the rest of the year for the good races for him. But a lot of West Point owners are not ex yeah. excited to see him back. Yeah, you know, Terry Finley does a great job, you know, bringing these people into these horses. This horse was bought for 70000 I think there's 10 or 15 people that own a piece of it, and that's given them the ride for life. So that's what our game's all about, right? Absolutely. Good stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, tremendously exciting in, in, uh, in the first week of June here. We get the Belmont Triple Crown on the line. we be going for a Belmont win. And... Uh, Hopefully we get, I'm hoping for a big field, and you know, I think that will really make a true test. I think you're doing 11, yeah, so 11, it's like 11 already, right? right. So, um, North Cassie yeah. mentioned us about Conquest Curl who's mm -hmm. moving forward. Uh, so, I mean, you, you've had a lot of great memories. I mean, running second in these Triple Crown races are great memories, but you obviously want to win Lemons Forever, the Kentucky Oaks, um, the Distaff with Unbridled Lane. I mean, those are big wins. Dollar Bill. He was a sweet. That's kind of like the horse that puts you on the map a little bit. He was a I mean, at the beginning of your, you know, of your run, Dollar Bill, never forget him. And then one of my favorite horses of yours was Silverfoot. He was great. He went to Lowell Handicap three years in a row. Yeah, see? Oh, yeah. I mean, that, uh, they should rename it the Silverfoot. <laughs> Seriously. Well, there was another horse that won it three years in a row also, a horse that Hal Wiggins trained. His name started with a C. So it's got two horses that have done it. Okay. So they have to. And, i got to tell you my Dollar Bill story, though. This is great. I'm looking forward to it. The that. Dollar Bill story. So, uh, the guy I used to work in your barn at uh, Hot Walk one summer, Marty Polio. I don't know if you remember Marty. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, uh, Churchill. yeah, and so uh, his wife worked at Churchill. Uh, Jessica worked with me at Churchill. And, uh -huh. uh, and so, but Marty was always following your barn. This is years later. And so he's always talking about Dollar Bill, you know, and he had all the tough trips that year, and there was a lot written about, you know, all of this, you know, and there were legitimate excuses because he's wide. They, but yeah, there was always one thing after another, right? With Dollar Bill. Kind of horse you're always chasing if you're, yeah. if you're a horse player. I think that's why Gary Mary was firing me because I kept that day. <laughs> but he so, did later on in the year ride an unbelievable ride in Unbridly Lane. Yeah, there so you go. He vindicated me. Uh -huh. He vindicated himself. Right. Right. So yeah, with Pat, you know, but uh, so we go to the Breeders' Cup Classic, right? That that summer, we're going up to Arlington. It's 2002, and uh, and he starts with the dollar bills going to win the classic, uh -huh. and I just said, you know, we're just guys. We're going back and forth, and I said, look, let's just stop with the dollar bill stuff. I'll give you a hundred dollars. You give me, you pick, you pick any horse in the classic, and that's my bet. And you have dollar bill. We'll do best finish. And he goes. All right, I'll take that bet. I'm gonna think about it. I'll come back. I the next know day, this is going. he comes back to me and he goes, "You got Paul Pony." And you win it, dude. He said, "And I said, and I said, Paul Pony, nice turf horse, great. I, I'll take him." So anyway, then I don't study. I don't study in the horse. And I said, "This horse has a chance." I said, "We have, you know, some three-year-olds came home that, you know, horses that couldn't quite or get distance, or animals in that race." 
So, long story, it, it is a long story, but I didn't bet in Val Pony. He wins the classic 41 40 to 1, right. made money. He bet in Val Pony because he didn't want to have to pay me if the horse won. Oh, my God. Yeah, that is, and that would go with Smith or Six, yeah. 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 but didn't get in trouble. Was, uh, he was, was a crazy. great little horse. I love the horse. Yeah, yeah. he was great. He was a sweetie. They just all, I mean, and they all just have a story, and you help write the story based on your training, the races you choose. <laughs> the results, and obviously their personalities. You, you have a soft spot in your heart for horses that ran well for you, but at the same time, like you said, Dollar Bill was a sweetie, so you remember him for more than just as a couple on the racetrack. Yeah, he was just, you know, all these horses that are such exceptional athletes and just, you know, just in the barn with them all the time. You know, you get to know them, and then some of them step up and run these big races, and you know, even if they don't, you still love them. We love our job, and you know all these great trainers taking exceptional care of these horses, and the people that work for us. You know the grooms, the exercise riders. They're they're there every day, putting their heart and soul into what we're doing here. And, you know, hopefully get a win. And it, it, you know, it's great when it pays off, which right. is like uh, the ultimate. So, how about younger horses in your barn? How do your two-year-olds coming up look? Uh, Lemon Drop Title is a horse that won impressively here at Churchill Opening Week that I think ran a couple times before that, Fairgrounds, Keeneland, and then you got him around two turns right. and one uh, horse that impressed me. Tell us a little bit about him and maybe some other horses we can look for. He, he's a very nice horse. He won here on Thursday before the Derby and uh, came back and worked. him. actually working with Taylor Bird for the Preakness and uh, he just has some, some, he's got a physical problem that we're really not sure what's going on with him. Maybe a foot. Uh, gonna check him out at the clinic and see where we're at. I, We've x-rayed him, the x-ray is good, so it's probably going to need a little bit of time. We won't see him until later on. As far as the young horses, a lot of them have just come in, have some very well-bred horses. We've got a Spites Town, Street Sense, have a Mine Shaft, a Super Saver for Terry Finley for West Point. Nice. Um, have some, some a more than ready uh, filly for Chuck, have a more than ready coat for Mr. Benson that owns the Saints. we got three horses for him, you know, so uh, we've got some nice horses, some great owners, and uh, you know, take our time with them. Hopefully, we'll be sitting back here next next mm -hmm. year talking about one of them. You know, you just yeah. it's just that you know you show up every day, you do your job, and uh, some days you know you got to tell them you're on the sidelines. You know, you got to take your time. You're, you know, it just takes time. So with those two year olds to keep you coming to the barn every morning. Keep you coming, absolutely. Yeah. Love, Love those spite sounds. Yeah, spite sounds. Nice to know. That's a great group of two year olds and uh, great stallions. Yes. So. What about um, New Orleans? I know you love New Orleans. You love competing there. Big Saints fan, right? Yeah. Big Saints. What do you think? Super Bowl Saints. Super Bowl Saints. They didn't win. I never thought they would. Forty-three yeah. years of bad teams. Yeah. Cried like something. a baby when they won to the when they won the that playoffs. Was that was fun. This is unbelievable. Isn't it? Onside kick. Oh. <laughs> you know, that, that's that's kind of what the previous was. It was like Sean Payton's onside kick. Like, <laughs> there it is, right there. You know. <laughs> That's the way I felt, really. Yeah. So, hey, yeah. New Orleans is great, great track. Uh, the horses do great there. Service is good. You know, love being there. It's home. Yeah. Sure. So, well, anything? No, just th thank you for joining us. Uh, great having you. Great talking. Uh, yeah, Previous absolutely. So, Brown. hope sure. a lot of people continue to tune in. This is a great show you guys are doing. You guys are doing a great job, yeah. and uh, appreciate it. We're having fun. We love talking horses and love. Right. Having to force people there and uh, good luck in the bottom. Thank you, Joe. All right, Mark. Thanks a lot. Okay. So we'll be back like uh, 15, what do we got? Back. Pretty 15 quick. minutes from now. So we have the Derby Wars webcast. We have the right. game going on. And we're going to give you some play by play. Mark and I will talk about some more stuff during that portion. But we're going to take a 10, 15 minute break. Right. 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 right here. There you go. He's wearing that at Belmont. That's right. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was All good right. to see you. We appreciate you. you making the effort to come down here. Yeah. Yeah. You guys come to Belmont? Uh, I don't know. I'm working here. Yeah. I'm working here, so I'll see if we can wait. Dallas, we've got a lot of love going on for you on Twitter, by the way. A lot of people saying good luck. They hope you win. So. All right. Yeah, we'll do our best, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the gift. We're gonna. There's a replay.